In this video, we're going to complete example three. We're going to sketch the following graphs by first completing the square. So here we have question A. We're also going to complete question B on the next slide. Now, the first thing we need to do is complete the square. The good thing is we did this question back in example one. And when we completed the square, we got three bracket x plus 2 squared minus 27. Our function is now in the form a x minus h squared plus k. We can see that a equals 3 and h equals negative 2 because minus negative 2 is the same as plus 2. And we can see that k equals negative 27, meaning that our vertex is the point negative 2, negative 27. That's because the vertex is taken from our h and k values. Remembering that there are several other things that we need to find before we can sketch our parabola. So we know what the vertex is. I'll, I'll label that here. Negative 2, comma negative 27. We can also find our axis of symmetry by just taking the x value in our vertex. Our axis of symmetry is going to be the equation x equals negative 2. Looking at the original equation, to the left of x squared is a positive number, meaning it's an upward facing parabola. We can also find our y-intercept by looking at the original function here. We've got minus 15 as our constant. So the y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, minus 15. Which leaves us with the x-intercepts. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our function here and make it equal 0. So 3 x plus 2 squared minus 27 equals 0. So let's start by adding 27 to both sides of our equation here. This will give us 3x plus 2 squared equals 27. Let's now divide both sides by 3. To cancel the 3, we now have x plus 2 squared equals 9. Now we need to square root both sides of our equation. The square root will cancel the square, leaving us with x plus 2 on the left. And the square root of 9 is 3, remembering that it's plus minus 3. It helps to write this as two separate equations. So we're going to have x plus 2 equaling positive 3 and x plus 2 equaling negative 3. We can now solve each equation. We subtract 2 here, giving us x equals 1. And for our other equation, when we subtract 2, we get x equaling negative 5. We now have all the information that we need. I'm going to start by labeling my x-intercepts. So I'll label my x-intercept here 1, 0, and my other x-intercept over here negative 5, 0. I'm not going to bother labeling my axis of symmetry. What's really important here is the vertex. So let's label our vertex down here as the point negative 2, comma, negative 27. In order to make this look like it's been drawn to scale, I just want to make sure that the vertex is halfway between the two x-intercepts. I also have a y-intercept at negative 15. Now, I've picked this point to be negative 27, so negative 15 should almost be halfway up from there. So let's make this 0, negative 15. 
Some of you may have noticed that the scale I've picked for my y-axis is very different to the scale I picked for my x-axis. For example, this point is negative 5 on my x-axis, whereas this point here is negative 27, far larger than negative 5. But that's fine. Sometimes in order to fit the graph on my Cartesian plane, I've got to pick two different scales for the x and y axis. Anyway, let's finish off by drawing this parabola, making sure that the turning point occurs at the vertex. All right, let's now move on to question B. Once again, we need to complete the square first. And the good news is we did this in example one. So when we complete the square for this function, we get minus x minus 5 squared plus 16. This is now in the form a x minus h squared plus k. So from this, we can see that a is negative 1. We don't really need to know what a is. We can see that h is 5 and k is equal to 16, meaning that our vertex is the point 5, 16. Our vertex is taken from our h and k values. There are several other things we need to find, but we know that the vertex is the point 5, 16, and we can easily find the axis of symmetry by taking our x value of 5. So the equation for our axis of symmetry is x equals 5. We can also find the direction of our parabola. Looking to the left of x squared, we can see it's negative, meaning it's going to be a downward facing parabola. We also have the constant of minus 9 at the end, meaning that our y-intercept is going to be the point 0, comma, negative 9. Now for the challenging part, finding our x-intercepts. We're going to take this function here and we're going to make it equal 0. So we've got minus x minus 5 squared plus 16 equals 0. Let's subtract 16 on both sides. This will give us minus x minus 5 squared equals minus 16. You notice we have a minus on each side. What we can do is we can actually cancel the minus signs. We now have x minus 5 squared equals 16. Next, I want to square root both sides. That's going to cancel the square, leaving me with x minus 5 on the left. And the square root of 16 is 4, remembering it's plus minus 4. Let's split this into two different equations. We've either got x minus 5 equals positive 4, or we can have x minus 5 equaling negative 4. Now we need to add 5 to both sides of the equation. This gives us one of the solutions. x can equal 9. And the other solution, when we add 5 to both sides of the equation, gives us an x value of 1. All right, let's now start labeling our Cartesian plane. I'll start with my x values of 1 and 9. So we'll label over here, let's label this point as 9, 0. If I'm picking this point as 9, I need to pick about here, I think, as 1. So this will be 1, 0, my other x-intercept. I'm going to label my vertex up here as 5, 16. Notice that I needed to make sure that the vertex was halfway between my two x-intercepts. I also need a y-intercept at negative 9. You'll notice when I labeled the vertex, I picked this point to have a y value of 16. 
which means down the bottom of my graph, this should be about negative 16. So where would negative 9 go? I would say about here. So 0, negative 9. Let's now draw the graph, making sure that the turning point occurs at the vertex. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 3. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.